It's summertime. Where's my water? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Y'all, it's summer. It's officially summer. Ooh. Remain calm or don't. <laughs> Today is Sunday. Remy wants to watch his stories. Anyway, it's Sunday. I finished my exams last week. I edited my video all weekend. So, to be honest, all I want to do this week is read. You know how it is. What I'm currently reading is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is a college reunion thriller whodunit situation. Um, it's supposed to be done today by 5 p.m. We'll see how it goes. It's pretty interesting so far. Look at you. Look at him. Are you kidding me? I also would like to pick up and finish All Mend by Wong Pyong Sun. This is our June book club read for this month. Join us if you like. We read a book within the first three weeks of a month and discuss in the last week of a month in a temporary discord server you don't have to be available for any live streams so you can't miss out Whew. i also want to make some progress in internal family systems therapy second edition <laughs> this is a textbook for professionals and somehow here i am reading it so this is my nonfiction. i haven't started it yet it's about the internal system that you have within yourself and how your negative feelings come from a version of yourself that's trying to protect you or something i don't know i haven't started it yet and then seven days in june by tia williams it's june it's summer yeah that's about it this is what i like to read this week honestly i'd also like to read more so we'll see how the week goes i'm gonna get outside because the sun is shining it's summertime baby Woo! this is the first time in almost an entire year that i can just focus on reading and work september through february it was university march through now it was intensive dutch classes and now we have three months to live out our dreams our literary dreams so let's do it let's have the best week ever break Hello. How cool is this shot? Clouds everywhere. Went for a nice two hour walk, ate a bunch of food, got some leftover pesto. You can't lose. And now I'm out here with my books, gonna do some reading. I'm at peace. I am so happy right now. It is officially 1.30 p.m., which means I've got a few hours to read before my book club. There are 323 pages in this book, depending on size. Depending on size, font, etc. of the pages, I can typically read 100 pages in an hour. So, I might be able to finish this before we meet. Let's see, let's see. Okay, I've read this much. The drama, oh my gosh. This reminds me so much of that game Until Dawn, that butterfly effect, friend reunion kind of scary video game. Very much like that. So if you like that game, I think you'd like this book. I have a hunch of who it might be that killed the friend, but I know that that's just a diversion. You know, we'll see. There's about two and a half hours until the book club for this. I know my friends didn't finish it, but I want to finish it. I think I can read 200 pages in that time, no problem, especially being this invested. So let's do it. My camera died, but there's only a hundred pages left. I knew it. It was a ruse. It was all a ruse. Wow. <laughs>
The really intense part. Okay, now I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the kitchen now. What was this? That one got me. It did. Oh no. At first I was like, hmm, this is a lot more drama than thriller, but I was still invested somehow. And then the last 50 or so pages happened. Okay. <laughs> While I did have a lot of fun reading this book, I don't think it makes a really great book club book. There's not really much to discuss. I guess it would be a good book club book if we had read it in chunks and discussed at certain marks who we thought it was and stuff, but reading it in one go and then just saying, what a wild ride, doesn't leave a lot of discussion, but maybe we'll surprise ourselves. Day one, book one, in the books, quite literally. I'm making peanut butter cups. It's really easy, I'll show you. You just put enough chocolate in there to coat the bottom of a silicone cupcake mold and then you pour in some peanut butter. It's that easy. I personally like to have way more peanut butter than chocolate and that's what's so great about making your own. The ratio is up to you. Then all you do is take your cups, top them with some salt, and put them in the freezer. Oh no! Hello, it is Wednesday. I have to go to a doctor's appointment soon, but I thought that now is a good time to go over all the things that we have been reading because I've been reading like a fiend. So we read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife on Sunday. That night, I read two chapters of Internal Family System, second edition. It's pretty interesting. I've been taking extensive notes. It's been good. Then on Monday, I read Feelings, A Story in Seasons, as you saw. Oh my gosh, I love this author's art style so much. I love the colors that they chose. This was beautifully mundane and perfectly poetic, which is my favorite genre of books. It's as simple as it sounds. It just goes over the author's feelings and how they process them throughout the year and how the feelings change throughout the seasons. And as someone who is super sensitive to such things, I felt very seen. I loved this. This was comforting. This was relatable. I loved this so much. This is something that I could see myself reading as each season changes just to get some soothing insight, you know? This was nice. This was good. I liked it a lot. Then yesterday was Lawrence's birthday. We went to Brussels. I'll show you a little footage of that in a second. But I read Almond in the morning with coffee and finished it up on the train. I'm looking forward to discussing this with everyone. This is the Pocket Pages book club read for June. Our protagonist was born with a brain condition called alexithemia, which makes it hard for him to feel emotions and understand them, etc. And a bunch of horrible things happened to him. It was a very fresh and interesting perspective to have a character like you and Jay experience these things. There was some great friendship in here. It was pretty good, I must say. And it was a nice, short, easy read. Despite our protagonist not having any feelings, it made me feel a lot. So I'm looking forward to talking about this one. And then, I know, I know, I started reading Seven Days in June yesterday on the train and this morning and oh, 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 this is some damn good writing y'all oh my goodness i'm just loving this one so far quite a lot the female protagonist eve suffers from migraines which hello very relatable and i just got introduced to shane who seems like he's got a heart of gold i'm really looking forward to them meeting i'm only on monday right now out of the seven days so we did sunday and i just started monday i'm so excited to completely devour this book today i'm gonna go to my doctor's appointment while i'm there i will show you how wonderful yesterday was and then we'll read in the park and then that's it that's our plan for today i am loving this week so much roll a clip
Hello, my friends. We are at the park. I am just a ball of sweat, and Lawrence still wants to go to the gym today, so I plan on sweating all day long. I'm about halfway done with seven days in June. Oh my gosh, this is written so well. I know that this book has some hype online, but I think it deserves way more. Where's y'all's energy for book lovers for this book? You know what I mean? We have two authors that are complete characters with complete lives. All of their voices are distinct. Uh, that's about it. That's about it. We went to the doctors. We went grocery shopping, getting some reading work done outside now. Gonna go to the gym later. We're playing a butterfly effect game called The Quarry, which is from the same creators who made Until Dawn, which is one of my favorite games ever. I just love butterfly effect games, so that's great. It's been such a wonderful past few days. I am so grateful. I'm supposed to be getting my exam results any second now. I've been refreshing my email a thousand times an hour. Ooh, that's about it. I'm gonna get back to reading. Okay, y'all. Ooh, it got too hot outside, and it's only gonna get hotter as the week progresses, so brace yourselves. I had my second Capri salad of the day, just so you have an idea of how great this day is going. <laughs> but yeah, it's too freaking hot. The last thing I wanted to do was embark on a pilgrimage to the gym and then lift heavy things in their non-air-conditioned building, so. We're just gonna do some Grow With Joe from home. Watch some Netflix, take it easy. I'll still move my stupid little body, then shower, finish this book, play some video games. Enjoy this day. Also, um, I passed my Dutch class. But only just, by the actual skin of my teeth. There was a vocabulary exam, there was a grammar exam. There was speaking, listening, reading, writing. Yes, six exams. You need a 60 overall. So I got a 61.3. C's get degrees. C's get degrees. Okay, I'm stalling. I don't want to stomp around in my apartment. It's too warm, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Check back in later. Yarmy Denzel table dupes. Keepy duka me my shoes. Hipsy kicky waka whoop. Hello. Happy Thursday. I finished seven days in June this morning. <laughs> Y'all, we're not kidding with this one. This story is so complete. It is so satisfying. Disability, specifically invisible disability, so, hello, wonderfully represented in here. I was giggling. I was swooning. Mom feels guilty about who she is. Make her feel happy about herself. She can't put on lipstick because her hands shake too much from pain, revealed Audrey. But she put it on today for you. Ah! <laughs> Screaming, crying, throwing up. We never had magic, lied Ava, swallowing a pain pill dry. Just hormones. Honestly, you shouldn't be allowed to have orgasms like that before you're 21. It gives you brain damage. <laughs> True. I love men written by women. I love men written by women. You were just trying to survive, said Shane. When you're drowning, you'll do anything to get air. Or girls are given the weight of the world, but nowhere to put it down. Shane. Listen, caring about things don't make you soft. It makes you alive. Shane! Ugh. I'm on the fence on whether I should be giving books star ratings because on one hand, I don't think it's nuanced enough. But on the other hand, this book deserves five stars. So what's a girl to do? Recommend it till the high heavens forever. This book deserves all the hype it has and then some. So good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. We're meeting up with Lawrence's mom for a little birthday lunch. So let me show you the fit. Let me show you the fit. Okay, we've got this little baby doll. That's what it's called, right? Little dress. It's very rare that I want to wear something that goes above my knees. Whoa, but she's feeling it. <laughs> and then I've got socks that match. Are you kidding me? Oh look, I'm feeling cute, I'm feeling comfy, I'm feeling prepared for these hot days ahead of me. But what better time to be sitting in front of the TBR because it's only Thursday and I have some time to read. I also wanna read something very different from what I've read so far. So I'm not super feeling another romance, you know what I mean? Honestly, I think I'm gonna dive into the unhinged women realm of things and pick up Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. A young woman named Amanda lies dying in a rural hospital clinic. A boy named David sits beside her. She's not his mother, he's not her child. Together they tell a haunting story of broken souls, toxins, and the power of desperation of family. She's little, we could do it. Also, I think I wanna read a graphic novel. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> I picked up Snapdragon as per April's request. How many videos in a row can I go? Plugging April. I accept the challenge. This is a cute little graphic novel. I think it's middle grade. The author's from Chicago. It looks really cute. I'm feeling another graphic novel. So, boom, that's what we're gonna do. That's what's gonna happen. It's been a good week, but a very good reading week so far. I'm gonna go hit the town. Yeah, <laughs> bye.
Okay, hi, we're back inside. Today was a really nice day. We got some food with Lawrence's mom and his brother. Then we got some coffee. Then we walked around the city. Then we got gelato. They had vegan chocolate and raspberry gelato. So I got a scoop of both. Decadent, exquisite. Past a plant shop. There were tiny little tomato plants. Lawrence's mom got me a tomato plant. Such a good day, such a good week. Such a good week. <laughs> Here, take some of my good week with you. You can have it. There's plenty to go. Lots to share. Earlier we picked out Fever Dream and Snapdragon. These are shorter reads. One's a graphic novel. It'll be fine. But for the seventh book, I would really like to read Black Cake because it is Caribbean Heritage Month and I have had this on my radar for a long time. I've had it on my shelf for a hot minute. What better time than to read this? In present day California, Eleanor Bennett's death leaves behind a puzzling inheritance for her two children, Byron and Benny, a traditional Caribbean black cake made from a family recipe with a long history. This one sounds so good. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my day is getting some reading done. We also need to finish that butterfly effect video game. So far, nobody has died. Knock on wood. That's about it. That's what's happening. <sighs> Feels good. Feels really good. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Friday. Yesterday I read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, which is a very aptly named book. It does truly feel like a fever dream while I'm reading it in the sense that it is quite confusing and it definitely does not follow any kind of linear progression storyline of any kind, but it's super easy to fly through. There are less than 200 pages and most of the page doesn't have words on it. So I read it in about an hour or so. I thought this was quite well done. It made me feel really smart reading it and kind of being able to follow it. it gave me big brain confidence um and afterwards i looked into what the story was meant to represent and i just thought that this was such a clever and creative way to show the consequences of pesticides and farming communities in argentina and nobody knows what's going on including you the reader this was kind of like if pew by katherine lacy and pure color by sheila hetty had a baby with sprinkles on my thinking i'm ending things with the confusion and not super knowing what's going on and there's kind of a unsettling element i quite liked it had it have been longer or maybe if she dragged out certain things i probably would have hated it but the fact that it was just a quick sit down experience i don't know I just thought that this was done quite well. So, fifth book in the books. This morning, I'm so sleepy. I'm gonna read Snapdragon by Kat Lay. I also have to do some editing today, a lot of editing today, because I upload every Sunday and tomorrow I will be volunteering all day. So there's not much time to read or edit. Let's end it off strong. I read Snapdragon with my morning coffee. Oh my gosh, what a week it has been. Overall, but especially reading wise, this was so good. I thought it would just be cute and simple, but the relationships and the characters are so powerful. There's important themes, there's trans representation. It's all just handled so well. It was so cute, it was so magical. I loved it so much. I loved this so much. Definitely a top tier graphic novel, in my opinion. Give her a read if she sounds interesting to you. Branch out. Try something new. <laughs> and then I edited for a few hours. Ooh, and now I'm gonna meet some friends. They still have final exams. So we're gonna go to a cafe that apparently has books, which is dangerous. So while they're studying, I will bring my internal family systems therapy second edition and my notebook so I can take notes on every chapter and also black cake so we can get started on it. Stoked. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, it's Saturday and it is 95 degrees Fahrenheit right now. We don't have air conditioning. Most of Belgium doesn't really do air conditioning, so I am sweating so much. You might be asking, Ali, weren't you just wearing this dress but in blue the other day? Yes, yes I was. I found something that is comfortable, doesn't upset my many sensory issues, so I get it in every color possible. So here we are. Today we're volunteering at a music festival. I'm excited to see my friends from Antwerp who I haven't seen in a long time. I'm just so warm. I can't imagine doing anything today. <laughs> I've been editing all morning. It is noon. I haven't gotten that much more reading done, to be honest. Yesterday, I read a little bit in the cutest book cafe ever with my friend Abel, but it was just so hot. <laughs> and I was just so hard to focus. And then I came home and was just in some kind of heat coma. And I just scrolled on TikTok for a few hours until I went to bed. I have to be patient and kind with myself. There's only so much you can do when your body is overheated. I read another chapter in the Internal Family Systems textbook, cooked some notes, and then I started Black Cake. The chapters are really short, so that's nice. We're on page 35. I would like to finish at least one of these books before Sunday is over because how satisfying is that to read seven books in seven days to kick off this summer? That's where we're at. That's what's happening. I'm gonna fill my water bottle and eat a popsicle and hopefully not die. Okay, bye. Hello, it's been a wild week. <laughs> So let's do a quick recap. On Sunday, we read In My Dreams of Holden Eye, which is a whodunit, drama-filled college reunion. I thought it was pretty fun. I thought it was pretty easy to fly through. I think this is something that could help you get out of a reading slump if it sounds like something that's for you. The cats have the zoomies like no other because it is finally cooling down. <laughs> then I read Feelings, a story in seasons. Um, this was a really sweet, really short, simple graphic novel that goes over how feelings and routines change as the seasons change. I thought it was beautiful. I loved this one. This might be definitely one of my favorite ones that I've read this week. Then I read Almond by Juan Pansan. This is for our Pocket Pages book club. Once again, it's linked down below if you would like to join us. It's because of the Patreon that I'm able to upload as frequently as I do. We're discussing this one pretty soon. And then next month we're reading Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. So, if you'd like to join us. Can't wait to talk about it. Then we read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Oh my gosh. This is definitely a top tier romance for me. I loved it so much. We follow our protagonist is a best-selling author and she stumbles into an old flame who is also now an author. We bounce between a literal seven days that take place in June in the present and flashbacks from when they were teenagers. It's so good. It's so well done. It's not just a fluffy romance. We tackle bigger issues. The writing is so clear and concise the characters are strong as hell like quite literally but also they're written really strongly put this one off no more if you have been meaning to read it because then I read Fever Dream by Samantha Sweblim. This one really does feel like a fever dream. It's really confusing, but once you not only suspend your disbelief, but suspend any expectations to follow the story in a linear way, and you also have to, you know, let go of any expectation of having it make sense in the moment, you really have to tackle this one like you are dreaming and just pick up pieces along the way that maybe make sense and be confused at the parts that are confused. There's another book by Sweblim that has been on my online TBR for a really long time, and I put it off because people said that the writing was it for them. It's called Little Eyes. Such a cool concept. Sounds very much like Black Mirror. I was quite impressed with this one. Totally get people's gripes with it though, but I think that Shrubble's writing is for me. So I already ordered Little Eyes. So that tells you all you need to know. Then I read Snapdragon. It was so good. I was genuinely blown away by this one. It was just so sweet to follow. I thought all the characters were also very well done, very strong. I think if you have been avoiding graphic novels because of how grimy and serious and violence and superheroes and politics and all that jazz, definitely pick up Snapdragon. If you like Heartstopper, I think this might be up your alley. I loved it. I'm looking forward to anything else that this author puts out. And this morning I just finished Internal Family Systems Therapy Second Edition. It was really interesting, but also a 
little maybe not for me just the book itself i think that the approach to this type of therapy is very unique and could definitely be helpful i'm looking forward to executing some of the exercises and reflecting on feelings through this lens but the writing was a little strange every time that the author said i i discovered this i noticed that i talked to a patient it would say i in parentheses rs like he would put his initials every time as if we forgot who was writing the book on one hand i appreciated all the dialogue between the patient but on the other hand i thought that it was a little bit invasive and also made it feel a lot more cheesy i guess but it was there for a reason but overall this is a type of therapy that seems interesting to me i definitely think if you're interested in this get the book that is actually written for readers not for therapists for some reason i felt like i needed the textbook for it don't ask me why and that's it those are all the seven books i read this week i don't usually read this much i think what really helped me were the graphic novels and the really short ones but yeah i just wanted to kick off summer with a bang i've been wanting to read for fun so bad for so long but with finals i didn't read for like two weeks and it just felt wrong happy to write that wrong let me tell you i'm gonna get going as always thank you for clicking thank you for caring thank you for being nice thank you for everyone on the patreon who sponsors this channel each and every day i'll see you next time bye